Welcome back to my channel. This is Mind Blank and blah. How's it going everyone? This is Mind Blank and welcome back to the channel where today I decided to finally talk to you about how to properly and easily overclock the GPU in your laptop. Now, this video has actually been requested to death uh, either by comments or by messages or any other fathomable way. And uh, I have to admit the fact that um, I wasn't aware that such a large body of people uh, aren't familiar to such a very simple, essentially a very simple process. Because all you need, you don't need skills, you only need some programs. And I'll show you of course what programs, uh, where to get them, what settings and everything else. But you only need that one program or two programs uh, which you install, the settings and you're good to go. You can overclock, it's not rocket science. Uh, now, before we actually get into the meat of the video, the overclocking part, uh, I just wanna say that if you enjoy this type of videos, this type of content and you wanna see more more, uh, GPU benchmark, GPU comparisons and uh, different uh, games tested, uh, then consider subscribing. I can guarantee that it's worth it. Uh, now, let's get back to the video, uh, the actual overclocking part of the video. So, uh, before we start over overclocking any GPU, uh, regardless of the fact that it's running in a desktop PC or in a laptop, you need to know your baseline temperatures for that GPU. And in order to do that, uh, you just need a very simple program, which I will show you where to get. Uh, you install that program, uh, you leave it running, enter your favorite game, just play it for around 10-15 minutes, exit the game and check your maximum GPU temperature. If you're in the 90 Celsius or above range, then you're not in a um, perfect place to be, so to say. So, you might be in that range because of two reasons. The first reason is uh, dust. The actual cooling may be clogged up with dust, you know, dust bunnies. And of course, uh, the fans can actually uh, ventilate the area, cannot uh, remove the heat from the chassis, from the GPU die itself. Go ahead and clean your laptop, it's very easy, uh, if you're not up to it, you can take it to a repair shop, uh, they'll probably ask you not a lot of money and you'll get a clean laptop. Check your temperatures, you should be in the 70 to 80 degrees Celsius, that's a perfect temperature for a GPU in a laptop. Uh, the other category, because I mentioned two categories, is the category which I, with my portable console, uh, find myself in, and that is the mm, lackluster cooling. Uh, which is a manufacturer fault, so to say. Uh, there are certain steps which you can do in order to improve the situation. I have done a few steps uh, that actually managed a 20 to 25 degrees Celsius drop in both CPU and GPU temperatures on the, on the Lenovo Y5070. I'll probably have a separate video about that because it's a long talk, but uh, if you're in that situation, uh, just wait for my video for further suggestions. Not a lot of people may be in that video, uh, in that, uh, uh, in that category. Okay, so check your baseline temperatures. This guide actually is applicable to uh, both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. Um, it's the same process regardless of the fact that uh, you may be running a 4 or 6 or 7 or 900 series GPU from NVIDIA. Uh, be aware of the fact that uh, for recent NVIDIA GPUs uh, you are limited to plus 135 megahertz overclock on the GPU core. So. Uh, your GPU may be able to push 200 megahertz or even more 240 megahertz sadly right now and for quite some time actually you are limited to that plus 100 uh, 135 uh, and the only way which you can go past that barrier is with a modded video bios which is sadly not something i can provide i can steer you in the right direction and it's also not something that i can teach you how to uh, how to make for yourself like the overclocking uh, a good place to start is the tech inferno forums uh, the link will be down in the description uh, check around uh, talk to the people over there post a message somebody may be able to help you out with a modded video bias and uh, from there on you are on your uh, own because each process of flashing the bias is uh, different depending on model, mm, manufacturer etc. So uh, without any other further ado let's get to overclocking. 
Okay guys, so hardware info 64 in order to check for your GPU temperatures, link is in the description, install it and run it, click on sensors only, run and as you can see you are greeted by a whole lot of information. GPU temperatures of course, CPU temperatures, everything you actually can uh, would like to find you have it in here. GPU is for me down at the bottom and you can see average temperatures and maximum temperatures. You want to check for both. So leave the program running, start your favorite game, play for 10 or 15 minutes, then come back and check for both temperatures. Make sure you are under 90 degrees for both average and maximum. That's all there is to it. So on to overclocking now and the first program we are looking at is MSI Afterburner. When you open it, it might not actually look like what you see here. It might actually lo look like uh, horse manure sprinkled with tomato peels. I absolutely hate this skin, so this is what it actually might be looking like. Now, who am I to judge? If you like it, use it. If not, click on settings, go to user interface. And in the drop down menu, you can click on the big edition version 3, which is what I actually use. So core clock and memory clock you will need to alter both in order to achieve a successful uh, overclock but uh, keep in mind that most of the times core clock is what actually matters and scales but uh, in some cases memory clock and overclocking the memory can actually give you uh, improved performance especially on gpus that have uh, limited bandwidth so when you move the slider the core clock slider you, it may not actually, uh, you may not actually get 810 megahertz like I do. Like I said, I am using a modded VBIOS and limits are much higher than you would actually see on a stock GPU. For you, it's probably limited at plus 135 megahertz, but don't worry, plus 135 megahertz is still a good overclock and is noticeable on uh, modern GPUs. Uh, memory should not be uh, limited to anything. I think uh, it, my slider maxes out at plus 1000, which is anyway not something that you will likely reach. I'm not going to suggest like old school overclocking guides did overclocking in small increments, like plus 5 megahertz or something like that. So I think that right out of, the, out of the bat you can go ahead and just use plus 50 megahertz. So either key in plus 50 megahertz or move the slider. Don't forget to click on apply of course. Uh, you can then test with either a GPU test uh, stress test program or a game and watch out for artifacts for lockups or any unusual behavior. If it's stable at plus 50 then you can move on to plus 75, test it the same way and then plus 100. Again I can almost guarantee you that uh, your GPU you will probably do that plus 100 and then you can finally move on to plus 135 megahertz which is the limit uh, you do the same for the memory but use higher increments like plus 50 or plus 75 uh, increments uh, with memory you have more leeway generally so this is MSI afterburner we are gonna take a look uh, at another program uh, it's called Nvidia inspector and of course the link is in the description so go ahead and install it and run it when you open it up, it actually looks very similar to GPU-Z. As you can see, it has a lot of information relevant to the GPU. Just click on show overclocking, you get a warning, click on yes. And it's very similar to MSI Afterburner, you get the same sliders, score and memory clock. Uh, some people prefer Nvidia Inspector because it's um, lighter than MSI Afterburner, but MSI Afterburner has that RTSS which is a uh, Riva Tuner Statistics Server which is the overlay that actually shows the FPS, the GPU usage, so on and so forth which you saw in my video. I actually use both, right now I'm sort of migrating towards Nvidia Inspector because uh, I like it, it's lighter. Um, I like the fact that you get that plus 20, plus 10, plus 1 increments for small uh, for fine tuning, of course negative 10, 10 negative 20 and negative 1. Uh, test absolutely the same as you would with MSI Afterburner. So let's say test at plus 40, then plus 80, then let's say plus 100 and you can slowly work your way up to that 135 megahertz limit. So a little more uh, functionality overclocking wise you have prioritized temperatures which I don't think is actually enabled unless you are running a modded video BIOS. You also have a voltage offset which is uh, useful but not if you're limited to that plus 135 megahertz. Uh, if you have an unlock BIOS then uh, you may actually require higher voltages in order to stabilize the GPUs at higher 
overclocks uh, and you also have prioritized temperature which is just a fail safe with which you can specify the maximum temperature that the GPU reaches after which it will start down clocking in order to uh, lower that temperature. So there you go guys, I think you have all the necessary information in order to start overclocking your GPU. So I want you to uh, start doing your thing and then post in the comments what GPU you have, what was the maximum overclock that you were able to achieve and most importantly what was the performance difference that you were able to achieve in your favorite game or program or whatever you tested. So, oh, and I actually forgot that you can right click over there and you can set uh, your new overclocks as uh, stable overclocks that the computer can use when it starts up. So, thank you for watching, have an absolutely wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye bye.